question. How long does it take to make a Toyota? How long does it take to make a Toyota? I don't know, what do you think? Assembly line, paint, manufacturing, the process. How long does it take to make an actual car, a Toyota? Anybody know? You know? Here's the answer. 17 to 18 hours. That's how long it takes to make a Toyota. And obviously you get what you pay for. When you pay for your Toyota, you get a Toyota. It takes 17 to 18 hours to make a Toyota. Flip side, how long does it take to make a Rolls Royce? Huh? How long does it take to make a Rolls Royce? Here's the answer. Six months. Six months to make a Rolls Royce. Another question. How many Toyotas do you think is sold in the United States? Here's the next question. How many Toyotas are sold all over the world? Here's a number, two million. Over two million Toyotas are sold all over the world. Flip side, how many Rolls Royce per class is sold all over the world? Here's a number, 4,000. Do you think there's a difference in quality? Do you think there's a difference in perception of value? Do you think there's a perception of uniqueness and supply and demand of what somebody's willing to pay for? People are paying what? 40, 50 grand for a Toyota, 30, 40, 50 grand for a Toyota? What are people paying for Rolls Royce? 300,000, 400,000 for a Rolls Royce? Why? Because of the time and effort necessary to create the product. So when I'm thinking about income, I'm thinking about securing your personal finances, making sure that no matter what happens, pandemic, injustice, looting, rioting, chaos all over the world, no matter what happens, do you still have streams of income and have you stored cash? What are we realizing right now throughout this crisis? That cash flow and cash is king. So many industries right now are being hit because of the pandemic. So many industries right now are being hurt because of the lockdown, the quarantine. What is it telling you? That you need to find and buy the best insurance possible. You know what that is? Insurance for your cash flow. Cash flow insurance. To make sure you got income coming in no matter what happens, you're secured financially. Why? Because then through a crisis, you've got confidence. I'm looking, I'm looking at the city right now, right? I'm thinking about the scene, I Am Legend. You guys remember that movie, I Am Legend? The scene where everybody's leaving the city, right? Will Smith is running with his wife, kid, dog. They're coming out the house. They're attempting to cross the bridge. And guess what? Everybody's on the bridge. Everybody's on the bridge. Not only everybody on the bridge, everybody's going to the quarantine checkpoints. Okay, you pass, you're good. Me, but okay, you're quarantined. Eh, you can pass. Uh, quarantine, boom. And everybody's getting checked out. And then in that scene, obviously, you know, the, the movie where, you know, Will Smith, you know, his wife, kid taken away and he's left behind. But I remember in that scene where all the helicopters, because people couldn't cross the bridge anymore, all the helicopters started taking off from the city. And what did that represent? The way I looked at it, wow, there's some people, instead of taking the bridge, they're taking a helicopter to get out of New York to save themselves from the epidemic. Whatever's going on is turning people into zombies. And what that symbolized to me is that when everybody's trying to get, to get from one place to another, in this analogy, financial, financial security, income, they're trying to get from one side to another side through a bridge. If that bridge is clogged, and you can't get nowhere with that bridge, guess what you gotta take then? Alternative transportation, in this case, helicopters. So translate that to your income. 43 million people filed for unemployment. People were, uh, were living high on unemployment checks and stimulus check for about a month, for about maybe two months, or however long it takes for that combination of stimulus check and unemployment check combined together. Some people living high in the hog for a minute, but there's gonna be a time there where unemployment check, unemployment check, unemployment check, you're not getting anywhere, you're not getting anywhere, you're not getting anywhere, even though you're, in <laughs> you're incentivized to stay at home. But after a while, those unemployment checks run out. Then what? That bridge, that financial bridge we're talking about now is clogged because everybody's trying to get that. Some people have five for unemployment, still haven't been able to get their unemployment. So what's my point? There's three major ways to make money. Three major ways to make money according to the IRS. Number one, it's called active income. Some people call it earned income. Act, so in other words, you're clocking in, clocking out. You make a sale, you make a commission. That's called active income or so you, you earn it. Second type of income that you can make. It's called passive income. And people think, well, I like passive income because I don't got to do nothing to make passive income. I just set it, forget it, and I get income. True, not true. The biggest myth I've seen people come across is that if once I buy something, once I set up a website, once I buy some real estate, once, once I get a portfolio going, which, which, which leads me to the third one here in a second, once I set some things going on, right? Vending machines, I got passive income. I ain't gotta worry about nothing. Listen, if you think passive income is set in, forget the top money, consider the stock market 30 years ago. Consider the stock market 40 years ago. 70 to 80% of the companies that are publicly traded, the best of the best companies in the stock market, publicly traded, people buying their stock. Today, they're no longer in the stock market. Wait a minute, that was, that, I had passive income come from that company, or I had a company, I was, I was getting passive income from investors. Sorry, if you took your eye off the ball, guess what happened to your company that was providing passive income? What happens if you took your eye off the ball when it comes to real estate, you had the wrong property manager, you had the wrong tenant, you had a, you had a, a leaky roof, you had some pipes that busted. 
what happened to your passive income? It's no longer there. If you didn't actively manage it and supervise it, make sure this income was coming in. But yet, that's considered another form of income, passive income. And the third form of income is what we call portfolio income. You have a series of investments that are providing you uh, capital gains and dividends, and you're living off that, your portfolio, your investments. If you're gonna live your life and build a life through one of those, you gotta figure out which type of income I'm gonna focus my time on to build and earn. Am I gonna spend the best years of my life clocking in, clocking out, sale, 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 commission, commission? Because one thing in sales, if you don't sell something, you're unemployed. Every day you don't sell something. So you have to figure out where you're gonna invest your time. What is the most meaningful to you? And I'll give you a hint. If you wanna be a cash flow millionaire, if you're watching this because you're watching the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel, Seven Figure Squad content, is because you wanna think like a millionaire, you want strategies like a millionaire, and obviously you want to become a millionaire. And when I'm studying people's tax returns. I'm studying these politicians. I'm, I'm studying tax returns of wealthy clients, right? I had, a, I had a practice for 12 years. I was studying the tax returns of people that were making money. I was in my 20s and 30s. I was just studying how they make their money. It's necessarily, remember, the three incomes. It wasn't necessarily them clocking and clocking out that was making them a lot of money. You know what was making them a lot of money? The latter two. It wasn't active income, money that you make from a job or a sale. It was a latter two, which was a, a combination of passive income and a combination of portfolio income. One of the most profound ones, most of the reason I was, I was studying was Mitt Romney. A majority of his income comes from portfolio income, which according to the IRS is taxed the least. Now, why does, um, why does the government tax that the least? Well, you're incentivized based on the IRS and, and them taxing the least portfolio income or what they call long-term capital gains income, right? Or dividend income over a specific period of time is taxed the least because as an investor, you're building companies by investing money, creating capital into, the, into companies around you, into your community, Wall Street, Main Street, you're investing. Instead of those companies asking the government for government assistance, they're coming to you as an investor for private money. So therefore the government continue to build roads. The government continue to build schools, hospitals, infrastructure. The government is actually incentivizing people to invest in businesses. So how come you're not investing in businesses? Because you haven't solidified your cash flow yet. You're not at the six figure, definitely not the seven figure yet, where it's easier to invest in a lot of different companies. I didn't really start getting into deep investments until I started making seven figures. Up until then, it's just kind of like wannabe mutual funds here, mutual funds there, which is cool. It's kind of nice. It goes into the passive portfolio type of uh, uh, category, but didn't really get me the type of returns as if I was investing in my own deal. And here, here's another thought to creating cash flow. It's three different types of cash flow. You can make linear income, okay? You clock in, clock out, 40 hour work week, 60 hour work week, clock in, overtime, boom, boom, there it is. It's predictable. The, the way you make an upside in linear income is you work more hours. The way you make more money in linear income in sales is you sell more. You have more products to sell, you have more transactions, you have more volume, but it's still linear. You clock, it's like this, linear, 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 as long as you're able to make money, as long as you have the capacity to make money assuming that you never get sick, assuming that you never get burnt out, assuming that you uh, don't want to take a vacation, you, you clock in, clock out, sell, 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 you'll make linear income, that's it, right? The second type of income, let me, let me uh, uh, go, go back to passive income. You set something up, you invest in property, you invest in real estate, you invest in websites, you invest in people. They help you make transactions, you start scaling, you make more than you. The skill set there is how do you retain your best people? How do you get, how do you get your businesses, how do you get your properties from not having the wrong tenants? Uh, your, your properties, because think about this, in, in real estate, one bad mishap, one bad roof, one bad pipe that busts in a winter time when it's freezing in Chicago can wipe out a whole year's worth of, of profits in that property. And if, if you got the wrong tenant in there, you may not be able to kick them out. Six months, eight months of no rent, dead rent, who's still paying the mortgage? You are. Who's still paying the taxes? You are. Who's still paying the utilities? You are. And if you don't, the uh, people in the government come after you. They fine you, they penalize you. If you had Section 8 housing, they're not gonna send you your Section 8 check because you haven't paid your water bill yet. As an example, it's passive income. The third type of income I started focusing on was what we call compounding income. Compounding, here's a cool part about compounding income. Let's say I'm investing in a portfolio and Let's say I invest 10 grand. And over time, my interest on that, let's say, is 10%. And my 10 grand goes to 11,000. See, a compounding income is just not the original principal that's making money now. Now it's your principal plus interest that you earned that started to compound. So in the next year, let's say I got a 5% return. Well, it's 5% return not on 10 grand anymore, it's 5% on 11,000. Let's say this thing grows to 20,000, but I originally, but I originally started with 10,000. So it's my principal, what I started with, plus interest that I earned over time that's starting to compound. That's called compound income. Compound rate of return. Compound interest. That's compound income. Because that's stuff you can live on. 
flip side to that is it takes time. I like to think about that too as people because there's assets under management in, uh, in building an income. At the same time, building a company, building a business, now you've got people under management or people under leadership, under your leadership, under your management. And I like the combination of both. Why? Because here, it's, it's something that I can't adjust, I can't modify. I can't influence leadership on money. I can't influence leadership on property. I can't influence leadership on gold. I can influence leadership and get the best out of this portfolio. But if I can invest my time in leadership, impose guidance, personal development into people and they become more productive, guess what they make? They make more money. They're happy. Guess what I make when they make more money? They're happy. I, we're both happy. So this is a transaction. This is a situation where both people can be happy. And if you have a system to retain people, to make people happy, they're making more money with you than they've ever had in their entire life, they're gonna stick with you. And what happens, they start telling their friends. What happens is their family starts to ask, hey, can I get in, can I get in? How many times have you gotten a job and your friends don't have a job and you're having a conversation, you're like, hey, hey bro, hook me up. Can you give me a job? Can you give me a foot in the door? Can you give me, can you give me an interview? Same thing happens in business. I remember my clients uh, uh, asking me when, when, when I still had a practice. My clients would say, hey, man, I like your chair. I like your chair. Wait, bro, you're having a, we have the same chair. We're sitting on the same board. Why do you like my chair? He says, the difference with your chair, hmm, check this out. He said, the difference with your chair and my chair is what happens when we both get up. I said, what are you talking about? When we both get up, I go back to my dead-end job, linear income. I go back to my dead-end job, earn income. I know what I'm going to make. I know the hours I'm going to work. I know the lifestyle I'm probably going to live. I'm going to do that till I'm 65 years old, right? It's kind of predictable, so I keep my job. Man, but your chair, what are you talking about? Your chair is different, okay? Because you get up, you can take your wife out to lunch, you can see more clients, you can travel, you can double down, triple down, quadruple down on what you're doing right now and exponentially grow your, your revenue, grow your, your, your business, grow your income. So, dude, I like your chair. At that point, I realized I needed a system to teach, train, and coach other people to create a compound, not only interest and compound return, but also uh, uh, from a business standpoint, from an entrepreneurial standpoint. And for the last five, six years now, that's exactly what we're doing. We've made more money than we ever made before. We've been more confident than we've made before. By the way, it took, it took me 21 years to figure this stuff out. And I'm glad if you're watching this right now, there's the opportunity to watch the right video because I didn't have these type of videos when I was coming up in the business world. I started when I was 24, 25 years old, I'm 46 years old today. I, didn't have, I, I had to pay money to get these, these type of conversations going on. And so my encouragement to you is you're, 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 you're planning out the next period of your life, the next phase of your life, that you figure out how you wanna make your money and how do you wanna make your money grow and compound over time. Because I'm sitting here looking at the city of Chicago, the people that make the most amount of money are the people that know how to pay compound interest and income, rate of return on their money, and compound also on creating more hours in a day. Because see, when I create a company, here's the disposition of business. Instead of me just having 24 hours in a day for, for me to make the most out of it, to be productive out of my 24 hours in a day, my 168 hours a week is dependent on me. But when I create a company and I create scale, I create systems and process where they can make money, we can make money together. Okay, we're creating a business out of this. Why, why do you think Elon Musk uh, or, or any of these CEOs, Be Bezos, what, what do you think they're doing with their factories and their assembly lines, right? What do you think they're doing? They're creating system process where everybody can get in this thing and get down together. The entrepreneurs take that risk. I've taken that risk. By the way, it's not that much of a deep risk, but it does take time though, but the payoff is worth it. The enjoyment I have right now with my kids, with my family, the conversation I'm having with my older kids, I have, I have five kids, I have a 24 year old, twin girls that are 19, I have a nine and a, and a 15 month old. The conversation I'm having right now is unbelievable. The depth of the conversation, much different now than it was years ago, even with my older ones. Now we're talking about issues, well, you know why? Because I got time. Instead of me now just having 24 hours in a day, now I have 240 hours in a day because of systems, processes, and people. Compound income, compounding business. When I'm, when it, and by the way, what did it take me to do this? It took me less than 500 bucks. So when people say it takes money to make money, I don't, I don't believe that. Because I took a $500 investment five years ago and it's brought us $4.8 million five years later. So I don't believe in it takes money to make money. It takes a little bit of money, a little bit. But if, if you're right, you find the right industry, you find the right system, project, mentor, and, and associations, knock yourself out. If you've been watching this, you got questions, I'm pretty sure you do. If you got thoughts, I'm pretty sure you do. By the way, I hope you're reading the right books. We're reading the books right now they're called The Game of Numbers. Here by Nick Murray, blew my mind. It was recommended by my, my mentor, CEO, PHP agency, Patrick, but David. I wish I picked up this book a long time ago. 
See, business, it says here, one of, the, one of the areas of building a business, which is what a lot of people do in business, is called prospecting, looking for your next customer. It's not an art form, it's not even a science. It's a discipline. And if you set out to build a discipline of entrepreneurship in the right industry with the right system process, this compound thing is no longer a fantasy. It could become a reality. If it could happen to a kid like me, it could happen to you. I'd love to know your thoughts. I'd love to know your comments. Put them in the comment section below. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like. Follow our business page for more content like this. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and notifications so you can be alerted the next time we upload our next video. Again, drop your thoughts, comments below as you march to 15,000 subs. Look forward to interacting with you and having more conversations just like this. That being said, guys, thanks for watching Seven Figure Squad, where people want to think like a millionaire, get strategies like a millionaire, and obviously become a millionaire. Thanks for tuning in, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.